On this episode of Behind the Scenes, we're going to bring you a glimpse of WonderCon 2024. And believe me, it's more than comic books and cosplay. This is my cosplay hat. Do you like it? For you. If you're not familiar with WonderCon, it's the sister show to San Diego's Comic Con. Both are owned by Comic Con International. What started out as a comic book convention in San Diego has now exploded into an arts subculture of its own. For three days every year, WonderCon takes over the Anaheim Convention Center to celebrate the popular arts community with everything from comic books to cosplay. Where else can you see the dude from The Big Lebowski and Wonder Woman together? Well, I love the costumes. The cosplay is just incredible here, and uh, I obviously participate. Ready? Go for it. The extent of my cosplay is my press hat. Back in the 1930s and 1940s, a reporter would wear a hat with his official press pass in it. This was very noticeable in the golden age of comics. Besides cosplay, there are multiple events you can attend, including panel discussions on practically everything from creating your own game to becoming a very successful writer. The key to writing is to read really good works, the kinds of uh, material you aspire to create yourself and then force yourself to sit down and write every day you have to develop a habit. The only thing that was stopping me from writing for 20 years while I was dreaming of being a writer is that I was getting in my own way. So no one can stop you but you. Just sit down and, and do, the, do the work. I also visited with stars from popular TV and film franchises. The Mandalorian was great. Um, I, um, it was great because we, we, we worked with big stars. I mean, I worked with you know, Brendan Wayne is John Wayne's grandson. A lot of people don't know that, and that's huge because, you know, I grew up John Wayne. <laughs> and, you know, and then John Favreau, who is our creator, our director, he, he you know, he's happy, you know, and I, I love him. And then Dave Filoni, obviously. Um, but I love being on the set. I love the people. I love how everything was put together. And um, I'm the first Jawa to be cast credited as Jawa in the whole Star Wars history, so. Future episodes lined up? I hope so. I don't know, but I hope so. Even if I did know, I couldn't say. But um, I hope so. I, I know I'm one of the main Jawas, so. I'm, um, I, from there, I, I'm Tika on Obi-Wan Kenobi. I'm the first Jawa with a name and, and um, a Jawa that actually talks. So I talk to Kenobi. I love about WonderCon is I get to meet the fans. And then also I have the 501st over there, the Star Wars Legion with me, which is awesome. It's the droids and the, the Mandos, the Boba Feds, the Jawas, they're with me. I love being with them. They do it for charity, they all volunteer. So all the Star Wars groups are here with me today. Um, what I'm doing right now is just my autographs. I have my Funkos, which are hard to get. I have my pictures, comic books, and. Um, of course, <laughs> this is Jeanette Goldstein and my memories of Titanic. Um, I think the hardest thing for me to do when I put my kids to bed was to not cry. <laughs> that was the best acting I've ever done was to not cry at that scene. My most difficult role, huh? That's an interesting one. Um, challenging. challenging. I would say aliens. It was my first film. Uh, I'd never been on, on screen. I was a stage actress. So being able to keep all the technical things that I had to uh, do, hit my mark and all of that, that was very, very challenging for me. And for you, what do you like about events like WonderCon? Oh, I love uh, events like WonderCon. I get to meet fans, I get to hear about, you know, how they, how they first saw the film, um, their experience of it. And also I get to uh, meet other actors that I, I'm, you know, a fangirl of. WonderCon definitely places the A into STEM to form STEAM, but it also displays a strong engineering aspect as well. For example, 
major sections of these Mandalorian outfits were made by 3D printing. And this helmet has electronic elements in it, as well as Bo-Katan's shield, which is very cool. It's a fact, building your own droid takes education and technical skills. My name is Victor Franco, and I am a member of the R2 Builders Club. Talk about what it took for you to build an R2 unit like this, you know, and then uh, a little bit about your background as well. I'm a software engineer by trade, but I've always been a Star Wars fan and an R2-D2 fan. And I found out there's an R2 Builders Club where people build these as a hobby. And that club has like blueprints for every last detail on R2-D2. So it's free to join the club. So I joined and I met a lot of people that had already built R2. And I was able to get some help from them to get me, myself started. And so the club itself, not only do they have blueprints, but some of the members um, supply some of the parts like the dome. And so I was able to get the dome from the club. But a lot of it I scratch built. Like the legs are completely made from plywood. So I cut those legs out on my uh, table saw in the garage. And so everything that's white and blue, uh, I did by scratch. Same with the foot shells. Those were built from scratch. But other parts like aluminum details are, came from members of the club. Talk about the importance of, well, it used to be called STEM, but maybe STEAM because they had art to it. But talk about the importance of uh, young people get into more technology. Yeah, I think um, the whole STEM idea is more important than ever now because we're using tech in everything. And when I was working on R2, I actually had to fall back on my high school geometry and trigonometry for certain angles that I had to cut. And it's like, okay, I need to use arc tangent here. <laughs> like, how do you do that again? So there's a lot of weird uh, shapes on this droid. And, and the same with the electronics. You want to know basic electronics and Ohm's law and things like that. So it, it pops up in hobbies and, and other walks of life besides your career. Now, last question. What do you like about events like WonderCon? Nice thing about bringing the droid to WonderCon is I get to share it with a whole bunch of people. Thousands and thousands of people come by, they take photos, they ask questions, and we build these things to be enjoyed. So it's really nice when we get to take them out and have the public interact with them. Many people from the peninsula have attended various comic conventions, including WonderCon, and they usually leave with more than just a couple of gifts. Some attend for the fun of it, and others a new skill or even a new career path.